welcome back to the Bot to Build YouTube channel. So today's video was originally supposed to be part of an upcoming video that we're making with the GTO here when we go through the entire power steering system. But I was thinking about it and when I started editing it, I was like, you know, I'm gonna go ahead and split this video up into two parts so that for the guys that are just looking on how to use the Russell's PowerFlex uh, PTFE hose, they would be able to find this video on its own and quick, easy and simple to the point how to make the fittings. And then for the other guys that wanna follow along and see what we're doing with the GTO and the whole power steering system, you guys can check out that video. And if you watch one and you wanna find the other so that you know how to do the entire thing, you can always look down in the description below and I will link them both to each other's video. If you're not already, please think about subscribing, ringing the bell, it'll really help the channel out and it'll also keep you guys up to date on the GTO, the Duramax and the Hellcat. So with that being said guys, let's go ahead and jump right into today's video and how we make these PTFE lines. We've just got some basic tools here that I like to use for doing PTFE and AN lines. Um, if you guys can, if you're doing this stuff a lot, I definitely recommend getting a um, actual set of AN wrenches. I have an adjustable one here because I'm not doing it all the time, but it's getting to the point where I'm doing it enough where I should get some actual wrenches. So we're going to go ahead and order some of those up. And then I've got just got some uh, hose cutters here. These are actually Klein uh, cable cutters, but they have worked perfect for me. And then I have a Russell's uh, it's a special tool for PTFE. You can use this end to spread it and then flare out the metal, which I will show you guys. And uh, other than that, just a vise. And I really recommend some soft jaws. Helps keep your fittings looking good. Not going to be such a big deal since we're using the steel fittings this time. But whenever you use the nice anodized or aluminum or uh, the, like, the colored fittings, I definitely recommend a set of these. So let's go ahead and get set up and jump right to getting this thing done. All right guys, so as I showed you I wrapped this with some tape and then you want to get the line basically as straight as you can and you want to take your cutters and you're going to try to make sure that the line is pretty much as true as you can get it. Keep your cutters pretty true. You want to make a nice clean straight even cut. Let me see if I can turn this around for you guys. Guess that was a quick release cut but anyways guys so after you make your cut you wanted it nice true even flush like I said so make this cut as straight as you possibly can and then we're gonna go ahead and grab our fitting you'll notice that unlike an AN fitting there are three pieces here instead of just the two we've got our collar we'll collar nut then you've got an olive and then you've got the actual fitting so what we're gonna do next is we're gonna take the collar and we're going to work its way on just like that. Then we're going to slide that down out of the way. So now we are going to want to take this tool and put it in right where we cut it and just work that back into a circle because after the cut it will make it kind of like uh, flat. It's going to squeeze it from cutting it. All right, so now that we've got that, worked out pretty round we're going to go ahead and grab the fitting and we will do the next step we are going to go ahead and pull off our tape <clears throat> all right so now that we've got our clean nice looking cut here we're going to take that fancy tool again um, like I said, it has multiple purposes for this and we are going to use it and kind of just slowly work it and turn it and you don't you want to make sure it's not cutting into the hose just apply a little bit of pressure and turn it as you are going and you want to make sure that the hose is going inside that little opening right there and then you can just keep turning it just like that and it's going to start flaring the uh, metal the stainless sheathing it's going to start flaring that around the uh, braiding here if you don't have one of these tools you can use a little flathead screwdriver um, and it's going to accomplish the same thing. Just going to work that out and just slowly start flaring it all the way around. Um, both work just fine. Like I said, I've just been doing more and more of this stuff lately. So I decided to grab one of these. It makes, uh, makes life a lot quicker, simpler, and easier sometimes. 
All right, so now that we've got that all flared out, let's grab our fitting and do the next step. I'll go ahead and take our olive, and you wanna get this kinda of centered on there, and you wanna start it all the way around the hose and make sure that it starts nice and smooth and flush. A lot of times you can push them on just by hand, um, just like I did there. Or, once again, you can use our uh, special little tool here, and you can use that, and it will help you get it on and get it going. You want to make sure that the hose goes inside this nicely, though. You don't want it to fold over, try to cut into it, split it, anything like that. You just want it to go in nice, smooth, and flush. And then once we get that, we can go ahead and look. I don't know if I'm going to be able to show you guys this part. It's probably kind of hard to see. But inside there, there's a little step. And you want to make sure that you get the uh, plastic, the inner liner, all the way to that last step right there. So once we get it flush, you want to check all the way around. You want to look all the way around your uh, olive. Make sure that that is completely flush. Um, if yours doesn't go together as easy as mine just did, you can take the hose like this and press down. Make sure you support the hose so you don't collapse it over on itself and just kind of wobble it around while pushing down and uh, it will go. It can be kind of a pain sometimes. So far this hose has been pretty good about it. But once we get that done and you are happy with it being flush, we are going to go ahead and grab our fitting and put some oil on this. Then once you've got that oiled up pretty decent here, I'm going to go and grab a tiny bit more oil. And I like to put a tiny bit on the threads. Um, more so I do this with even more oil on the threads when I'm using the aluminum, uh, the aluminum fittings. Just because I feel like it helps the threads from stripping out or anything like that when you're trying to get this started. So now that we have our uh, pieces lubed here, we're going to go ahead and grab our hose and our fitting. And we're going to put this, and we want it to go inside the inner braid, or the inner plastic there. And you want it to go in nice and smooth. You want to make sure that you don't feel the uh, inner lining bending over or collapsing on itself. And then, that's pretty much it for this part. You want to get it flush. You want the uh, olive flush up against the fitting here. And then, next we're going to grab our collar nut here. We're going to slide this forward. You can kind of turn it a little bit as you try to get it over the uh, stainless braid that you had to flare out. And then we want to get this nut so that it's nice and straight and even. And start slowly trying to thread it on there carefully. Make sure you don't cross thread it or anything like that. I feel pretty good that ours is started and uh, feeling good. So then we are going to take this over to the vise and put it in our soft jaws and I will show you how to finish this thing off. All right guys, so now that we are over at our vise, like I said, these soft jaws, mainly once again, when you're doing aluminum style fittings, this one is steel, so I'm not really too worried about it, um, but I'm gonna use them just because I have them and just so I can show you guys. But you wanna go ahead and put this in your soft jaws and line up the nut in the little uh, V on both sides, you want to leave this part of the uh, collar nut sticking up just a little bit so that when we grab this with our wrench and uh, you get it close, it doesn't. your wrench doesn't grab here and maul that all up. So then we want to go tight with this. With the steel ones, you can go decently tight. Uh, once again, with the aluminum ones, you want to go a little bit more careful because you don't want to uh, deform the collar nut here. And now we are going to grab our AN wrench. Um, again, guys, aluminum, definitely recommend getting a set of these or using uh, one of the adjustable ones like this. For what we are doing here today, I'm actually going to use a regular wrench just because this is steel and uh, we're not going to mar, uh, mar it up like we would if it was aluminum. So now that we've got that in there, we want to take and grab our fitting. You want to keep an eye on this hose right here. Um, when you hold the collar nut and tighten the fitting, this hose is going to push out a tiny bit. Now, if it starts pushing out a ton, then something is going on with your fitting and I would check it. But it is going to push it a little bit because you got to remember we're tightening the fitting, which is pushing down on our olive and our hose and everything else. And 
the, the hose actually isn't pulling out. What's happening is the nut and the fitting are getting closer together and it gives the illusion that the uh, hose is coming out. Now, if you clamped the fitting in the vise and then did the nut, it shouldn't move at all. But this is just how I prefer to do it. I prefer to hold the nut and tighten the fitting. So now we're gonna go ahead and crank this down All right guys, so you just wanna keep tightening it like that with a wrench, and then when you are done, it should look something like this. Um, as you can see, well, I don't know if you guys can see to be honest because of the camera, but there shouldn't be much of a gap here. Um, if you have a big gap here and you can't get it any tighter, there's probably something going on. You wanna get it pretty much as tight as you physically can without rounding it out, and then it should bottom out, and that should be about it. So let's go ahead and finish this line up, get it on the car, and start on the next line. All right, guys, so we just went ahead and assembled, hopefully, our last fitting for the power steering system. Well, our last PTFE fitting anyways. Um, I did mention this in my fuel system video, but I didn't have this at the beginning of either video. I had ordered it and been waiting on it for a couple weeks, but it finally came in, and I want to go ahead and show it to you guys. It's I definitely recommend it under the um, like tools required to do this type of stuff, and what it is is a um, flush and pressure test kit for AN style fitting, so you can use it for AN push lock. Um, PTFE, anything with the AN style fitting. Um, mine is the Sportsman kit and it's dash six through dash 10. You can get bigger kits for all the sizes. And all it really is, um, it comes with the plugs for the different sizes and it comes with adapters and an adapter to hook this up to your garden hose. So that, like I said, you can flush the line and um, also pressure test it. Anytime you're making AN, PTFE, push lock, any of those types of lines, I highly recommend flush it one way or another whether you use the pump or whatever you're using in that system to flush it or you get this kit to flush it because that is the dirtiest these lines will ever be is when you first assemble them whether it's from stuff from the warehouses from chilling in your garage or just from cutting the line and assembly um, it's just naturally going to be dirty so this is obviously a good idea to try to get all the crap out of the lines so let's go ahead and set this up and we will go out and uh test this line and make sure we're good to go. Super simple kit to use guys. We're gonna go ahead and put a little bit of oil right here on the mating surface and on the threads. Gonna go ahead and <clears throat> tighten this down. Um, obviously you could have grabbed it up here but I had it in there still from when we just made the fitting or made the hose end. So now All you gotta do is tighten it down just like you would any other fitting. Don't need to go crazy, just snug. Then we will flip this around and put the other end on. Now we've got one more piece. This one is the adapter so that you can hook it onto a garden hose. Same thing. And then, um, you don't have to use this, but I had one of these from a filter I use when I wash um, the cars, and I had an extra one from an old filter, and it is perfect because you can thread it on here on the bench, here at the bench, and then you have the uh, other end that will turn freely to tighten it on the hose, because otherwise you'd have to spin the hose that you're testing around and around till you get it tight. So, with this we can use this thing just to tighten it up quick and easy. So let's go ahead and take this thing out to the garden hose and test it. Just gonna go ahead and take that end I was telling you about. I think the uh, actual adapter or the piece I'm using from my car wash thing might leak a little bit right here. So don't so much look at that, but look at the, uh, the hose that we made. So now we can Go ahead and slowly turn on our hose.
go ahead and open it up. I've got the hose fully open. It's leaking down here. See it right there? But that's not the hose. So we should be good. I don't see any leaks on the uh, power steering hose that we made. So I think we're good. So now what I'm going to do is shut the water back off. And go grab our wrenches real quick. And I will pop this cap back off. And then we can use this same setup to flush it. Just watch yourself when you go to pop this free. Because sometimes it holds a little bit of pressure. And uh, you might get a little wet. Luckily we didn't. I heard the air come out, but no water. Alright, so now that we've got that cap off. Let me see if I can do this and show you guys at the same time. Without getting my truck soaked. That's the hose on full bore. I mean, that's quite a bit of fuel. I mean, obviously water in our case, but if you're using a Dash 6 for a feed line, I think it'll flow some water or some fuel. But this one is now flushed, so we can go ahead and kill our hose and go put this thing on the car. All right guys, so since we've had a chance now to go over the PTFE fittings and how I assemble them, I hope that you guys feel comfortable using this PowerFlex series hose. It's been really good for me and I hope that it can be really good for you guys. If you found anything in this video to be handy or helpful, please think about sending it to a family member or a friend, as well as subscribing and ringing the bell to the channel. It'll really help this channel grow and I'd appreciate it a ton. But with that being said guys, thanks for checking out the video and we will catch you on the next one.